Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Kaba Ilko number 7185 RA1-10. Um, dash KA or KD, KA2, KD. Uh, what is this? This is a KA2. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this, at this cylinder. 7185 from Kaba Ilko means that this is an inch and an eighth long cylinder. It's a five pin cylinder. It's drilled six. There are six holes drilled in there for combinating. This would be a five pin original lookalike style key. Okay. However, if you needed to run a six pin length key into it, you certainly could. Um, it will not only fit, but you could combinate it as, as well. Uh, the RA, that stands for a uh, Ruswin 981R uh, key is what that stands for. The dash 10 means satin bronze finish. That means that that is a satin bronze. The face of the plug is the 04 or satin brass. They don't, Kaba does not make those plug faces, I think, in anything other than chrome or uh, satin brass. I did jump over something. The one in the part number RA1. It means it's a standard cam on the back. Okay, just a standard cam. Uh, many other cams are available. And the KA2 in the part number just means that from the factory, this was likely a box of ten of five sets, five pair in the box that were keto like in groups of two. So if you wanted two of them, and you said, give them to me key to like, I could go to the shelf and pull off a set of two, and there you go, they're already key to like. Um, you know, so that is a handy way by which that's done. Extended description information down below, let's go over that. It does tell us the length of the cylinder is inch and an eighth, that it is a five-pin cylinder in a Ruswin 981R uh, keyway. We're going to explore that at length in a moment. The cam is a standard 863G cam. It's just the standard cam. Um, I'm not surprised that someone is ordering an 863G cam on an RA, uh, RA1 for that matter. The 981 keyway was uh, existed as a, an active keyway between 1938 and 1965, I believe. Um, mortise locks, especially very old mortise locks, uh, uh, most especially very old mortise locks, locks that are a hundred years old, they will work from a standard cam. So this client very likely has an old mortise lock body, even though I would expect the length of the cylinder to be a little bit longer, like an inch and a quarter. Um, but you've got an old keyway that's been inactive for several decades. You've got a mortise cylinder. Um, you've got a standard cam, and you've got satin bronze, which is not the most popular of finishes these days. Uh, for cylinders. So it all tells me that we're probably dealing with an installed lock uh, that is several, several decades old. Uh, machine from solid bar brass. Uh, the cylinder housing, the plug, that's all made of brass components. And what the takeaway is from that is that it's very smooth operation, very nice manufactured pieces, very tight tolerances, gives you an extremely smooth, predictable, reliable dependable installation because you're dealing with quality base components. Uh, brass is a quality base component from which to build or manufacture cylinders from, okay? Um, and that's what this would be excellent for. The, the thread size is 1.15, 1.15 diameter, one and five thirty second of an inch. Uh, that is a standard thread diameter. I don't know how long that's been a standard thread diameter and thread at 32 threads per inch. I don't know how long it's been a standard, but my guess is certainly pre-Civil War would be my guess. Um, there are other diameters of mortise cylinders, uh, three-quarter inch, then of course the one and five thirty-second, inch and a half, two inch. There's a couple of others that exist as well that I'm, I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, but I expect that that thread was, that thread type was established uh, maybe early to the mid 19th century is my guess. The 32 threads per inch, this super ultra fine, that's required because you need lots of threads packed per inch 
because you're installing this down into what? Something that's really thin, generally. And you need as much thread count through that thin material as possible. That's why this would be the case um, right there. Uh, cylinder face diameter, 1.36. Let's take a couple of dimensions. 1.36, since we're talking about that. So basically, inch and 3 eighths diameter. Not so much of a big, important uh, dimension. The length of the cylinder is inch and an eighth. Now, that's from the underside of the head to the back of the cam. That is just simply how mortise cylinders are measured. Okay, I have seen another manufacturer measure the body of the cylinder recently. I don't recall who that was. Oh, it was Best. They, they, they want you to define the length of the brass body alone, so this would be called one inch. Well, mortise cylinders are measured from the underside of the head to the back of the cam. That's, that's how they're, they're measured. Best wanted you to define that dimension, which you know we can certainly do that, but it's, it just stri strikes me as a bit atypical. Uh, these grooves in the side, those are meant so that when you thread this into your lock body and tighten the set screws to hold this in the lock body, okay? they're going to uh, set or nest or seat into these, these grooves in the side. That's will prevent the cylinder from being turned, uh, from rotating. Okay, now let's take a look below. There is the Russell 981R keyway broaching. That is what the cylinder plug looks like. When you look down into the cylinder, that's what you're looking at. If you're looking at your key, at the tip of your key, it will be the opposite, okay? When we look at the profile of a cylinder, it's not the key, it's the cylinder that we're looking down into, okay? The standard cam is also listed there as well, shown as the 863G. Now, the next thing to do is let's, let's explore a little bit deeper on what this cylinder is because um, it's handy to know, I think, a little bit of the history of the keyway uh, and where it comes into play. So let's switch to the screen view and start with a review of the Kaba Ilko book. Now this is the item that we're looking at and if we uh, jump over to Kaba Ilko which is here we're going to hop to the manufacturers page and take a look at that. Um, so we're going to dissect that part number and see what the options are as a result. Um, we're going to take a look at the key blank catalog and go a little bit further. So let's start with let's start with the key blank catalog. And keep in mind that we're dealing with the um, no. We'll start with the brass cylinder manual. So the brass cylinder manual. If we scroll to our our cylinder section, which is basically here on page six, we can st we can see our part number and how it's dissected. Seventy one sixty five. Okay. That means down here, oh, sorry, 7185 is what we're working on. That's an inch and an eighth cylinder. That's five pin. It's pinned five. And that it is drilled six, as we discussed earlier. Now we have the keyway, the RA in the keyway. And that's right here. And that's where I want to start with this. Now we have here a couple of interesting pieces of information. We've got this key blank number. We've got this key blank number. Ruswin RA. RA doesn't mean much to us in terms of knowing what that means. That's Kaba Ilko speak for 5981R and N1011P. I happen to know it's 981R. So this is important information. So one thing I like to do is let's grab one of these numbers and hop over to the key blank catalog, which is here. And we'll pull that document up and we will search that document for that N1011P. Do a find function on your keyboard for N1011P and you're going to find some instances where it exists in the catalog. Well it goes straight to this Ruswin N1011P key blank. Okay, That's the key blank that if you wanted to order that cylinder and then more key blanks, that's the key blank you would order. The RU52 is the Ilko easy number, okay, you'll see a key blank that will have N1011P. Let's see if we can N1011P.
Okay, yeah, we've got an N1011P here. We have a photograph here. Indeed, it says N1011P and RU52. All right, so let's continue searching the document for N1011P. What you're going to find is that it will then show up in other sections of the catalog. It cross references to an ILCO lookalike 5981R. So we know what the N1011P looks like. I have a photograph of the actual item here. But let's take a look at what this 5981R is. Well, for some reason, it comes up under Sergeant. It's got the right keyway. And this is under Section 4. It's the lookalike. And apparently, they're made to look more genuine to the original key blank this entire series is. Why it's being termed Sergeant here, I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with Sergeant's keyways to know if they happen to have one um, or if that's just simply an error. Okay, It shows up in the catalog twice. Um, and let's search for that N1011P again and see what else we can find. Well, what we're going to find now is that it will exist in the cross-reference section. If you wanted the ESP key blank part number, you can cross-reference it to the um, RU... It was an RU4 for ESP. And as you continue to scroll through, there's the ILCO EZ number. That's the RU52. The JET key blank part number. And it goes on. It will cross reference to Orion. It will cross reference to the genuine Ruswin key blank. If you had, you know, if we went back in time and you were ordering from Ruswin directly, you would order it as a 5981, okay? Then also a Taylor cross-section. So now you know a lot more about that key blank. And when we hop to the cylinder manual again, let's search this document for the N1011P, and it's going to come up in the same type of chart. So this handy chart that is on page 20 of the Brass Cylinder Manual catalog will allow you to answer the question of... I want this RA cylinder. I need some more key blanks. There you go. Order it as an N1011P. You could also order it as an RU52. We understand what that is. The lookalike version would be the 5981R. This happens to be the six pin version, the A1011P, that I know. Okay. So you're dealing with a Russ 981 keyway. And that is a definite, absolute keyway from Corbin. But we can dive even deeper, if you'd like, and go into the world of Corbin Ruswin for a much deeper look at what the 981R keyway is. So what we'll do is we will get to the manufacturer's product catalog. Wherever you see manufacturers, click that, and then do, then do a find function on your keyboard for Corbin, and get to the Corbin Ruswin page. And you'll find a document here called cylinder manual. A couple of versions of it. I don't know if they're different, but they have different years of publication. We'll open up the 2016, and this is a 100-plus page document that talks about the entire history of all things Corbin, uh, all, all things, I should say, P.F. Corbin, a company that started in about 1851 or so, don't quote me, but right at the mid-century. Um, Russell and Irwin, or Ruswin, and then the consolidated Corbin Ruswin. So this is a history, and it's out of date um, from the perspective of 2019. It's out of date, um, so we would have to be mindful that it's not going to have Access 3 or Pyramid in it. But what it's going to have, very, very elegantly, is a history of Corbin and Ruswin um, keyways. Okay, so if you are exposed to Corbin Ruswin at all, at all, you're going to want to have this document available, and you're probably, if you deal with it, you're going to want to read it at least completely one time, and then go back and focus on those areas of concentration. And let's start with the history of this 981 key blank. Now, this document is very um, important because it will give you the history of not only the 981, um, but additional information as well. So 
This is a Russ win, and this would be called the 981 class of bidding class. It's a 981, 982, 983 keyway, but its bidding class is 981 class. So because I don't have the pages exactly memorized, we're going to scroll through to where we can find a history of the 981 um, key family. And we're going to get to Russwin 981. Here it is on page 19. So this document will show you, um, it will talk about the history of the 981, 1938 to 1965. Um, is when it was a is when it was Russwin's stock keyway. Additional information is here for you to read. So we're dealing with a 981 keyway. It's an R because we're doing a five pin. Okay. Now you'll see that there are three keyways involved here: a 981, a 982, and a 983. They call it R, S, and T in a five pin. What's up here, the 9812 would be a all section key blank. So this key blank would be able to pass each of these individual blanks. And if we were to really scrutinize these as close as possible, you would start to detect some dimensional differences like this, um, this ward here in the, in the cylinder plug is a different shape than this one, okay? This warding profile here is different than this one. So therefore, none of these keys would actually pass each other. But what's interesting about this is we can look at the Kaba Ilko catalog and find the same information. In the Russwin section as well, we need to go to section two, which is a, uh, the, the pink section. Okay, so we're in section two, and we're it's alphabetical. We're going to scroll up to Russwin. Okay, so we have Russwin. Let's get to the beginning of Russwin here. And we're looking for our 1011P. Here we are, the N1011P. So what you're going to notice is that Kaba Ilko has your N1011P, although they call it a P. Um, Corbin calls it an R. Okay, an R. Then they have the S and the T. S and T. So the same sort of multiplex sort of structure exists on this key system as well. They're all five pin. You can also do it in six uh, six pin as well. They certainly did have a they certainly do have a seven pin um, that um, either is likely still available. The factory will very likely still manufacture this material if you're extending an existing system, but they won't create a new system in it. Um, but it's interesting to be able to look at the history of where that 981 comes uh, comes from. Okay. The, you've got 5-pin and 6-pin blanks. That's what Kaba Ilko makes for the Russwin 981 class um, in the what we would know as the R, the S, and the T keyways. Um, although 6-pin, they call it P, S, and T, Corbin definitely calls those V, W, and X in the 6-pin uh, variant. Okay, but it's understood if you want to do that S keyway in a six pin, they're going to permit you to order that, of course, S keyway six pin with the A in front, and then that all section key blank. So this was a uh, this was uh, the 91 981 class is a family of three keyways that operated in a multiplex sort of structure with an all section key blank that could be used to pass these. So these here would be key blanks and cylinders. This would be a key blank only. An application of why or how you could leverage a multiplex system would be very simply stated. If you had a three-story building, an architectural firm, a design firm, and a law firm, the owner could walk around with the all section blank and pass all of these different floors. 
but the keys from the first floor won't that not only will they not work in the second or third floor they won't even enter the cylinder they won't even go in and and so and and vice versa from the second to the first and third and from the third to the first and second so these cannot even pass each other that's a common usage for multiplex um, another common usage for multiplex is when you want to extend a system um, the theoretical quantity of keys in a five pin two-step system which from Corbin uh, pardon me from Russwin because it's it's a pre-70 system is a two-step system and let's get to the 981 class for Russwin I know what I call the depth and spacing charts are down in this area as I continue to scroll through so we're looking for a Russwin 981 class and I know it's a little bit further down here we go so this would be a two-step system and this page 70 will give you the depth and spacing that you need to be able to originate these keys or cut them by code um, according to the depth and spacing. This is a two-step system and without getting too deep in the woods, perhaps it's too late. In a five-pin system, in a five-pin cylinder that is two-step, you would be able to have four um, cuts in your key bidding array. So what that means is you've got five chambers and you have four possible cuts in each chamber. So that is going to end up that's going to end up uh, uh, permitting you to have a total possible number of 1024 keys. And that's accomplished by basically saying, five to the fourth power five times five times five oh no, i'm sorry forgive me backwards um it is four to the fifth power okay so what we have is in each each of the five chambers we because it's two step we can have four possible numbers in our in a level two system in our change key uh, for our change key. We have five chambers, so it would be four possibilities to the fifth power. Four times four times four times four times four, and that would be four times four is 16, times four is 64, times four is 256, times four is 1024. Okay, so that's a lot of keys. If you change it to a six-pin system, it would be four to the sixth, and that becomes 4096 possible keys and that's really great however what if we had a system that required 3,000 keys okay <laughs> okay well you, you probably couldn't you probably couldn't do 3,000 keys in a five pin system in a multiplex but the point of the matter is you could take all of your biddings for this keyway photocopy them in the new keyway and while the cuts on the keys are the same because the keys cannot pass each other's cylinder you then, in effect, double the amount of possible keys that you have at your disposal. Okay, so that's the other reason for a multiplex uh, type of system. Now, to break that down even simpler, um, you know, you have a crafty or a clever homeowner every once in a while will order a keyway, of the, like the standard keyway. Well, a crafty one will order less common keyways. So let's say on the house, they do an S keyway. On the, on the detached garage, they do a T keyway or the gate. Well, the landscaper needs to get into the garage once every other week. So they give them the T keyway. The house is on the S keyway. The T keyway won't even enter the S cylinders. The owner walks around with the all section blank and can pass the house and the garage. So that's a standard application. Not only will the key not work, but it won't even enter the cylinder. And that's nice because you know it's quite clear that you're not meant to you know, enter those doors. So a bit esoteric uh, on a deep dive of where you would use multiplex. But that is you know, really a, um, uh, an entire ex explanation, I think, of the, of the system. So this Corbin and Russwin, Corbin Russwin cylinder manual is irreplaceable because it gives you all the dimensional properties for every cut. 
There's System 70 and Pre-System 70. In 1970, they made a substantial change to their keying system and go, they went to a one-step progression. Because 981 existed well before 1970 only, it is exclusively what Pre-System 70. No reason to say it because it didn't exist after 1970. It's a two-step system. This will give you the length of all your bottom pins, any build-up pins, and uh, top pins for interchangeable core and a 509 plug diameter. You could also do a 552 plug diameter in this as well. If you were doing master ring in this, which could very, very, very likely be possible, because uh, master ring was incredibly popular during that time frame, you would have your bottom pins and your, and your build-up pins, and then your master pins as well. Okay, nice handy part numbers down here if you're servicing the material and you need spool pins or spring covers, things of that nature. Ball bearings you can also order. They're not listed here, but ball bearings may have been, uh, certainly would have been seen in 1930s master ring, you know, type of work. I know Russwin, Russwin had a master ring cylinder. I don't know the era of which they had it, so we, we might need to substitute Russwin for Corbin and everything I just said. Uh, and then in a different pre-System 70 keyway. But nonetheless, there, there it all is. So let's uh, close up the key blank catalog. Let's close up the Corbin Russwin catalog. And let's get back to the cylinders at hand here, dissecting that part number. So what we did was we established that we had a 7185. inch and an eighth, and then we then we got derailed with the RA explanation. The next is going to be your cam or tailpiece. If you recall, this is a one, so it's going to be a standard cam, but you can see that there are several and many other cam possibilities. If you want to run that cylinder for whatever reason into a Schlage L-series lock, order a 15 cam. If you wanted to do Kaba Ilko's very petite, nice, elegant deadbolt, order it with an 18 cam. Uh, and so on. You want to run it into a Corbin Russwin lock? Yeah, absolutely, that's pretty common. Run a 19 cam. That's nice because you can order a cylinder from Kaba Ilko in that 981R keyway, run it into a Corbin Russwin lock with this cam, and the advantage there might be, well, you save some money on the cylinder. That's probably what the advantage is. Now let's continue on with the finish uh, and keying. As we get down to the end of our uh, run on this video, finish and keying, you can see from the chart here that there are lots of finishes that are available. Certainly not all of them are stock, and certainly many of them will be special order and even carry a minimum. Um, I would not, you know, there'd be no surprise at all if we needed to get black aluminum or stainless steel, that there would be a probably a 10-piece minimum on that. Um, but anyway, reach out to us, and we'll be happy to oblige. The key work, uh, Kava can do uh, pretty much any key work that you see available here. They can do all of it, in fact. We can as well do key work. One thing that you like to do when you order this material is, by all means, order them key to like, or key different, or KA2, or KA4, or O-bitted, um, and that will not carry any additional cost. Um, so ordering them KD, you know, that may not be the best way to go about that. You, you might want KA2 because at least you get sets of two key to like. And if you needed to do two that were key different, you could just break apart two sets. Um, so just be mindful. Be wise as to how you order the key work on this material. The rest of this catalog will allow you to continue your deep dive into the world of Kaba Ilko cylinders. And let's wrap up this video on camera. So in conclusion, this is a very high quality cylinder by an exceptional company that provides um, ex extraordinary value as well. Um, very inexpensive relatively uh, for what it is that they're providing. They do a great job. Their product line is evolving. This catalog is quite evolved from the prior catalog. Um, I'm very uh, partial to the product line maybe because it's just simply my familiarity with the part numbers. It might be just easy because I understand it. Um, but also there is uh, really a tremendous uh, indiv individual over there in tech support when it comes to their cylinders who tolerates my several and many questions, so I say thank you. 
Um, I am also a big fan of their deadbolt. In the first part of the brass cylinder catalog, there is a reference to their mortise deadbolts, and they don't really give us a photo of at all, and that would be nice to see a photo of it. But the bottom line is this. There is a hub that installs into the door. It's a circular hub. Into that hub, you install your latch bolt, and you secure the latch bolt. Then into that hub, you can thread mortise cylinders into it. Okay. What's nice about that is that system becomes modular. You can install anyone's mortise cylinder into it. Um, let's say you're doing Schleg Primus. Well, just order a Primus deadbolt from the manufacturer. That's fine. That would work. Um, you might also have some cylinders that you want to use and turn into a deadbolt, and you can use the Kaba Ilko to do that and not have to buy everything from scratch. There is also something interesting. There are three back sets on those deadbolts. Of course, the two and three eighths and the two and three quarter, but they also have a two inch back set, and that's really nice. Remember a time a client called and said, I can't find this deadbolt anywhere. I've got a pair of 2.0 10 light oak French doors exterior, and I need a deadbolt. I need to lock my doors. I don't want surface bolts. And I said, I have exactly what you need. And the client loved not only the quality of that Kaba deadbolt, but the fact that it was exactly in the center. His back set was in the center of his four inch style. Just absolutely beautiful of what they had. Um, I like it because it's modular. You can piece pieces together. As you, you, you have a door that's three inch thick, who cares? Go with longer mortise cylinders. That's all that there is to it. Okay, so super simple. If you have any questions on the Kaba Ilko number 7185 and an RA keyway and a one cam and a 10 finish or any other Kaba Ilko product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.